If you come in. They gave me word today that maybe by tomorrow night we might have air. Possibly. There's hope. <laughs> so I'm hoping. Are we on? We're on and we're live. All right, Macy's the only thing I forgot with the water drip, so I can like wash my hands and whatever else I have to do. Do you also need something for what? I can use this newspan here. So, are we ready to start? Is it six o'clock? I don't know. I'm trying to do it. I can't say what time it is. I don't know what. It's 5.59. 5.59? All right. And there's eight people watching. So say hi to eight people. Hi to eight people? Daniel's got to tell me who you are. <laughs> comment so we know that you're, that you're on. Please comment. Please uh, ask questions, like share silly comments, whatever, like make me laugh because I'm like entirely super nervous and if you can't tell. And um, I don't like just talking to video cameras. Uh, I will introduce my crew. This is Macy. Uh, she works here at the restaurant. <laughs> And then Daniel is also here. What'd you put that on for? They can't hear you. We do wear masks here, I promise. We took them off because it's only the three of us here right now, and um, we have no audience except for you. So um, would you like to open us with prayer? Sure, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for this, uh, this beautiful day that you've given to us. Thank you for the rain outside. And thank you for those who are listening in and watching. We can still do this class even though uh, we have the social distance. I pray that you will bless us this evening and bless all those who are listening in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So welcome to Christina's Kitchen. If you are just now getting on, Daniel, is there a way that we can put uh, these two cameras a little closer together so I'm not looking wall-eyed at them, one eye on each one? Yeah, that'd be great. So Sorry about that. we have Sorry. one <laughs> cell phone <laughs> recording for uh, hopefully a later date upload to YouTube. And then the other cell phone is Facebook Live. So if you try to call Daniel and I right now, you won't reach either of us because um, both of our phones are being used. <laughs> and now I can line up one spot and see both of them, so I'm glad. But um, before I get started, I wanted to do one commercial. I don't do commercials very often, but did you notice my shirt? Got veggies? I love it. Especially since uh, today is uh, a whole class on how to use vegetables, right? We got to have our veggies. and. Uh, I have it in pink, and I also have it in purple. Uh, and the back side is even better. Uh, the back side says plant-based and loving it, and then Christina's Kitchen at the bottom. So if you would like your own t-shirt, they are available for sale. Uh, we're selling for $14.99. And hey, if you can't come here to the restaurant and get it, I can bring it on my delivery route, or I can even ship it to you. So uh, feel free to let me know if you would like a Got Veggies shirt. That's, enough. That's the end of my commercial. And you can share this video so that all your friends can see this special offer. That's right. <laughs> hey, if you get like 10 friends to buy a shirt, I'll give you a shirt free, okay? So <laughs> there we go. Um, cooking vegetables is one of those things that we do here at the restaurant all the time. And some of you are probably like, okay, uh, I've been cooking vegetables all my life. I don't even need this class. Um, maybe you don't, maybe you could come teach it for me, but um, I think that we can always learn a few things. And so what I'm going to share with you today is some of my favorite uh, throw together uh, recipes, maybe stuff that you won't find is like a big elaborate recipe online somewhere. Um, just some ideas to help get you out of the rut of making the same thing all the time. Uh, a lot of us grew up knowing you, you got to eat your vegetables right so what do we do we submerge them we boil them until they taste absolutely nasty because there's no taste left and they're so mushy that when you stick the fork into them they collapse and uh, that's not the way vegetables are meant to be eaten and so I want to show you some ways that vegetables can taste good uh, ways that don't take very long they're easy and I'm gonna quit talking because I want to show you how to do it so uh, as you can see, I've got a whole array of vegetables here uh, because this is the season for garden veggies. I mean, look at this, like fresh picked corn on the cob from local farmer's market, um, beautiful red bell peppers here. We got garden tomatoes, garden cucumber. 
Uh, Daniel went out last night and picked these zucchini out of my garden. This uh, cucumber came from Grandma. I hope she's watching, but if she watches later, she'll know I advertise her garden too. I'm trying to think, do I have anything from Mom's garden? Um, I'm not sure. I've got all kinds of stuff from my mom's garden too, but I'm not sure what here is. Um, but I also have stuff from local farmers markets, um, like the corn came from a local farmers market. Um, the uh, cabbage came from the farmers market. The kale, um, the kale, and I've got these beautiful like purple green beans. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like them, but uh, aren't they just gorgeous? Like, okay, you probably can't even see that. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. If I hold, ah, I can't reach. Okay, anyway, but, uh, <laughs> they came from an organic farm in Williamsburg. There's um, actually stringless, but tastes absolutely amazing. So, and then we have a few grocery store specials too, because this time of a year is not the year for broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, but um, we wanted a few of those too. So the grocery store is still okay. Oh, look at this. We got garden potatoes, new potatoes. I love these things. Uh, and we're in the middle of a thunderstorm here. It's pouring rain. Uh, it's sweltering hot in here with no air conditioning, and this is a great day. Anyway, I'm fully distracted now. So, one of the ways that I like to fix veggies in the winter time, okay, I know it's probably not relevant for now, but in the winter time is I like to roast them in the oven. In the summer, I never want to heat up the house. But uh, if uh, the oven or even a toaster oven, which the toaster oven is nice for a small batch when you don't want to heat up the whole house, um, or maybe it's just you and you want few roasted vegetables. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do some roasted veggies too. We're going to do that first because I'm going to put them in the oven so I can shut that oven off so we can like uh, not die over here. So. When I roast veggies in the oven, uh, and when I cook veggies anyway, my goal is to have as little oil as possible or no oil at all. Uh, because whenever you use oil on vegetables, you actually end up locking some of those nu nutrients so that your body can't get to them. Not all of them, but some of them. And uh, so, of course, there's other reasons why I try not to. But for the oven, you either need to spray it with a light oil spray so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan. Um, or if you want to do no oil at all, you can put a piece of parchment paper down on the bottom and that will do the same thing. Uh, so for my, my favorite roasting vegetables, and I do these a lot in the winter time because these are a winter vegetable, and that is Brussels sprouts. Um, you can also do them in the summer too. But uh, I love oven roasted Brussels sprouts. And so what I do, you can do them whole or you can cut them in halves, either way. Um, I'm Because of the sake of time, I'm gonna do them whole. So I just trim off the bottom. I look for any bad spots on the leaves. And, oh, I even have a compost bowl, look at that. We can not be messy. And uh, we're just going to throw them into our pan. Very easy, very simple, doesn't take very long. The thing with oven uh, roasting, by the way, if you guys have any questions, feel free to holler them at me. Uh, Daniel or Macy will interrupt me anytime and tell me that there's a, a comment or a question, and I'll be I'll probably be happier. But uh, anyway, um, there's then, tw there's 23 very quiet people watching it. <laughs> Five people have said hello. <laughs> Who said hello? My mom. Uh, Michelle Hi, Perkins, Lisa Musgrove, Debbie Lons, oh, and Lindsay Elliott. There's the comments. I did. I haven't ah, switched off Daniel's the screen. Daniel's like, now look at the comments already. Oh, well, hello okay. to all of you. Thank you. There we go. Now I feel like I'm on my Certainly myself anymore. Certainly why I'm so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Macy. Um, and thank you guys for saying hello. So the one downside to roasting in the oven is that it takes a long time. If you have a great big pan, not a little one like this, but you know, a great big monster and you're uh, roasting vegetables for 50 people. Okay, maybe not 50, maybe 20. But uh, <laughs> uh, you need to allow at least an hour for your veggies to roast. Um, the thicker the veggies are in the pan and the bigger the pan, the longer it's gonna take. If you're just doing a small batch like this, usually about 40 minutes is more than ample. But still, 40 minutes is a long time to wait for your food. So as you can see, I'm doing it first. If I want roasted vegetables, 
uh, and I'm hungry, I put them in the very first thing before I think about anything else that I'm going to eat. Even if I know that these are just a side, um, or maybe they're going to be the main dish, I don't know, sometimes they are. But uh, get them roasting first thing. And then while your stomach is growling and you're smelling the wonderful aroma of roasted veggies coming from the oven, then uh, you can uh, make the rest of your meal. By the time the rest of your meal is fixed and the table is set and everything is all ready, your roasted veggies will be done. Now when I do uh, roasted Brussels sprouts, I like to throw something in with it. And you can throw in any vegetables you want. But when I'm in a hurry, guess what I go for? I go for baby carrots. You know, like ones that you don't have to peel and slice and do anything with. So here we have our baby carrots in here. We're just gonna throw them in with the Brussels sprouts. Ah, oh, we're already seeing some color. You see that? Isn't that nice? Belle and Charlotte says that they like the Brussels sprouts with a little oil and salt. Oh, yes. Megan says hello from ICC. Hi, Megan. And Valerie says hi from West Virginia. Yay! You guys are talking. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, yes. I love Brussels sprouts with a little oil and salt. That's great. Um, so, let's see. What should I put with these Brussels sprouts? Um, if I wanted to, I could throw in a few green beans. That'd make them pretty. Don't you think? Add some color. Oh wow, look at that. It just sparkles. And I'm going to throw in a couple pieces of cauliflower in there. And you know what else I like to throw in? I like to throw in whole mushrooms. Um, not like, you know, the big monster things, but like the baby bellas, the baby portabellas. Um, just wash them, trim them, and throw them in whole. I don't even cut them or anything. Um, because the interesting thing is with roasted veggies is that they shrink. As they're cooking, they uh, shrink in size. So you might say, oh, that dish is full. That's a lot of roasted veggies. By the time they're done, it'll be half full. And you'll be like, how did I think four people could eat all that? Um, there was only enough for two. Uh, Daniel and I can demolish that in a meal. Well, I could probably eat that whole thing in a meal. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> I make it my main dish. Forget the sides. <laughs> it's just a meal on its own. But we need some flavor on this. So I'm going to put in some fresh minced garlic. Um, if you have a nice mincer like this, the, it's, that smashes it, gets that garlic oil out of it. Oh wow, it just like pops the flavor like you would not believe. Um, and like I said, this is a this is something I do more in the winter time um, or the spring and fall when it's cool outside and I don't mind running my oven. Um, when it's 100 degrees outside, I find a different uh, menu. Oh. Lexi says, hey, Daniel, Susan, Macy, and Christina. Hey, Lexi, we miss you. Lexi's on vacation. I'm so glad she can watch. Holly says, purple green beans since purple is Christina's favorite color. <laughs> of course. How could you guess? <laughs> yeah, the only reason I'm not wearing the purple shirt today is because it was in the laundry. Um, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's, at least it has purple writing, so I'm still purple. <laughs> but no, I love pink too. I love pink and purple. I just haven't seen pink green beans yet. Charlotte misses you. And Bill is watching from Arizona. I love you, Charlotte. I miss you too. And Bill, hi. Greetings all the way across the planet. I mean, the continent, whatever it is. Okay, I have a, no, I don't. I need a salt shaker. I don't have a salt shaker somehow. Okay, so How I How can put, you cook without a salt shaker? I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna sprinkle some onion powder on here and look at that, the fan is blowing it all away. Um, so, some onion powder, thank you. Uh, you need a little more onion powder. That's like the main flavor here, so. I love onion powder better than fresh onion. We're gonna put a little salt on here, and hopefully it won't blow away too. Charlotte says she's wearing her purple Christina's Kitchen shirt. Yay, Charlotte! All right. Okay, what do you think? Is that looking good yet? Hold it there, I can zoom it in. Uh, I can hold it closer, maybe. I got it. <laughs> we can see it. There we go. <laughs> so, now I'm just going to put just a really light bump. I think it all blew away. I don't think anything landed on it. And I'm going to put a little bit of water. 
Uh, because I don't like dry roasted veggies. I like moist roasted veggies. Um, and so to make it moist, you put a little water in the bottom of the pan and it actually like steams it. Is this to measure? Obviously I'm not measuring very well. Um, but anyway, if it looks like it's a little bit too dry, uh, once it gets in the oven and you start baking it, you can always add a little more water along the way. But there we go. So we're going to stick these in the oven. Actually, Macy is going to stick these in the oven. Uh, the oven is already preheated. I have it set at 400 degrees. It's the lower oven. And uh, we're going to I gonna was going to ask you why the oven was on. That's why the oven's on. We're going to set a timer now for 20 minutes. Can you believe it? I actually remembered a timer. Lynette, do you ship to Colville? I'll ship you a shirt, Lynette. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure the food would make it. Maybe uh, I, I might be able like second day air some bread or something. Gene um, is wearing purple too. Oh, good. We have the purple plan. Okay, so I just set my tire for 20 minutes. When it rings, we are going to stir the veggies. And then we're going to put them back in for another 20 minutes. That's why I did it first, because I want them done by the end of this class. So there's our roasted veggies. So now we're going to go to another one. Uh, we're going to do steamed veggies next. So for steamed veggies, there are many ways that you can steam. But my favorite, if I just want a small batch, is to use my UFO which those of you, have you been to our classes before or you took the Cooking Basics 101 um, or 202, you probably saw this already. This uh, UFO you can find for like less than five bucks at Kroger. They actually have plastic ones too if you don't want a metal one. Um, and uh, they have all different shapes and sizes. But it's so nice because you can put a small pot or you can put a giant pot and you have a steamer basket. So if you want to steam vegetables, that is a great way to do it. Can't keep and up with you. We are going to, whenever you steam vegetables, you want to get the water boiling first. So we're going to put some water in here. Charlotte says we keep breaking the timers. We use them every meal. <laughs> every meal. <laughs> timers are important. You know, I had a friend uh, who, uh, I'm going to let that boil. I had a friend who told me, you know, I've been cooking all my life. I've never had to use a timer to cook vegetables. Why would you use a timer for vegetables? So then I made her use a timer for vegetables because she was at my house. And uh, at the end of the meal, her daughter whispered to her when I wasn't listening. And she said, Mom, how come Christina's vegetables taste better than yours? <laughs> well, <laughs> so that later on, uh, she was actually at my house staying there, and I was here at the restaurant working. And so her daughter said, Mom, can you fix me some vegetables like Christina does? So her mom used a timer for like the first time in her life on something that she was making by herself. And uh, she put it on the table, and, and her daughter said, Mom, your vegetables actually taste like Christina's. Well, there's an important timer. <laughs> so um, Lisa, Lisa says she wishes she had smell vision. So she can smell it. I wish there was like, if Daniel could invent this teleportation device that he's been talking about for the last 12 years, I think we could like teleport this food all to you. I mean, the smell in here is just incredible. Um, while I'm waiting for this to boil, I want to get some more water boiling, but I need uh, the two steamer pots. Um, the spaghetti one that we use, and then the the big one that's narrow, but it's got the double deck with the little steamer. Get, grab both of those pots. I want to show those. And let's see. What else? Lynette wants a shirt. Lynette wants a shirt? All right, Lynette. Private message me your address, and we'll get it to you. And, and tell me if size. you want pink or purple and what size you want. I have small, medium, large, and extra large. I think Macy's getting me a pot. Goodness, and yeah, it still kind of tastes like corn, but 
mercy. Like the flavor and it's the, it turns to mush. Um, and so my favorite way to fix corn is to steam it. Now, if you're gonna steam a whole bunch, you probably want to use a big tall pot that's about the size of this, right? So that way uh, you can stand up your corn in it um, and only the bottom part is going to be in water, right? You can steam it in any tall stock pot of any sort. Um, if it's just you, uh, you can steam it in just a tiny bit of water. And I want to show you uh, the way my mom does it. She has uh, this pan, which I'll be showing you in a little bit. This is actually a ceramic pan. Oh, she's got it. Good. Just put it right there. This is a ceramic pan. And uh, my mom just puts a tiny bit of water in the bottom of it. And then she sets her one or two, whatever, you know, just she wants to eat ears of corn in, down in it and puts a lid on it. And she said she steams it for about four or five minutes is all it takes when you're just doing one pop. Uh, depends on how young, of course, the corn is. Um, and uh, if you have a good bottom pie, it doesn't even run out of water. Uh, so that's a great way if you're just going to cook one ear of corn. Uh, you can also use a steamer pot if you have one. Uh, this is one of my favorite steamer kettles here for vegetables because you can put water in the bottom, put your veggies on top, and uh, it's got the nice holes for steaming. You know, so you can hear water boiling and then you can set, you know, you can do like four ears of corn in this one um, across and uh, let it steam that way. Either one of those works when the two of us are eating corn. No, unfortunately not. When Daniel and I eat corn, we have to use this pot. And that's because for one meal for the two of us, we have to have six years of corn. <laughs> oink, so, oink. <laughs> <laughs> we like corn. So if you're going to do, uh, it's amazing how nice it works in this pot. Uh, you can set, to set your ears of corn standing up. You can actually get like 10 years of corn in here if you need to. Um, but it steams beautifully. None of the corn stains in the water because you got this nice steamer basket, put water in the bottom. And uh, the nice thing with steaming corn instead of boiling, it doesn't take long for that water to boil. Because, yeah, I know why this water's still not boiling. I never turned it on. It's like, man, it sure is a quiet burner. Okay, now it's actually on. It might actually come to boil now. Charlotte yeah. steams her golden potatoes. For vegetable is actually healthier because the nutrients go down into the water. Now, if you're making soup, it doesn't matter, right? Because you're eating the water and the vegetables. But if you're boiling a vegetable and you throw away the water, you just threw out most of the vitamins and minerals and you're just eating what's left. Uh, so anyway, what I'm going to do here is, uh, you know, I'm fixing a big dinner for Daniel tonight. <laughs> Might be my lunch for a week. <laughs> uh, I doubt it last few week, especially not with me helping you. Um, I'm going to put some water in the bottom here. It doesn't take very long to boil. When you just have a little inch of water in the bottom, can you see that? Uh, versus if you had to fill the pot with water and bring it to a boil to boil all those corn. So Macy, I'm going to give this to you. I want you to put it in the kitchen and put it on the burner and get it boiling and uh, when it boils we'll throw the corn in okay we're gonna let that sit there and I'm gonna move this pot now I love this pot here at the restaurant we use it a lot if I'm making pasta salad I love to steam vegetables for pasta salad and uh, when you're steaming vegetables the secret is to steam it just the right amount until it's just soft enough that your the tip of a sharp paring knife will go through the vegetable. If you wait until it's soft enough that a fork goes through it, you just made mush. Especially since because when you take it out, you put it on the table, it keeps cooking because it's still hot. So uh, if I'm making a pasta salad and I want some steamed vegetables in there, like say I want um, some steamed uh, carrots and broccoli and cauliflower, I'll put the carrots in first. Rule of thumb, carrots take 10 minutes, generally. Uh, if they're baby carrots, they take a little longer. If they're cut really tiny, they'll take like a few minutes less. But about 10 minutes for carrots. It's about the same for green beans, about 10 minutes, give or take. 
Um, so I put the carrots in first after my water is boiling. And then um, I set the timer, not for 10 minutes, because I'm gonna add my other vegetables to it so it's the same pot. So I'll set the timer for like, if they're cut small, I'll set the timer for three minutes. Um, and then at the end of three minutes, I will add my cauliflower pieces because cauliflower takes longer to cook than broccoli by about one or two minutes. So I'll add my cauliflower, I'll set the timer for like two minutes, but of course it's gonna have to come to a boil, so you gotta allow a little extra time for that. So two or three minutes, depending on how long it takes to steam again. Um, timer rings, then I add the broccoli, and I set the timer for two or three minutes again. By the time it's done, your carrots have cooked 10 minutes, your cauliflower is cooked like five minutes or six minutes, and your broccoli is cooked three minutes. And uh, you take it all out and you dump it in ice water that stops the cooking process that keeps your broccoli nice and beautiful and green, uh, keeps your cauliflower from falling to pieces, and uh, leave it in ice water for one minute, and then strain it out, and then add it to your cooked pasta, and put your salad dressing in there, and your cherry tomatoes, and your fresh green onion, and parsley, and whatever else you want to put in there. And you have an amazing pasta salad that's not too crunchy, but it's not much. Look at this, we have boiling water now. Yay! So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you all a tip. Charlotte just, just mentioned this in the comments. But the way you, you can taste the food from a virtual cooking class, tell your kids to go and cook it. And then at the, when the video is over, you can just taste it. There you go. <laughs> I like that idea, Charlotte. You gonna share your kids with me? <laughs> <laughs> she says, Josh, I just washed oil and salted our Brussels sprouts and popped them in the oven. Yay! Go, Joshua. All right, good job. Okay, so I just threw some green beans in here, but I want some flavor with my steamed green beans, okay? I don't want just plain steamed green beans. So one of the ways, now my mom and I argue about this, okay? Some people like garlic green beans. Some people like onion green beans. Some people like both. I prefer onion green beans. My mom likes garlic green beans. You can make it however you like it. But if you like onion green beans, uh, this is dehydrated minced onion, all right? And I just put a light sprinkle of that over the top of my beans, and they will that onion will rehydrate as the beans are cooking. Um, if you want garlic green beans, which we can add a little garlic flavor to this, you just simply mince some fresh garlic in there, all right? Wow, talk about the smell. I wish you guys could smell this right now. I can smell it. I guess, uh, <laughs> Charlotte, you can smell the Brussels sprouts anyway. <laughs> or, or if you don't already, you will in a little bit. The roasted veggies in the oven smell really good. Oh, so Macy can smell the roasted veggies. I can't smell them yet, but I'm pretty sure I will pretty soon. I'm just going to sprinkle a little salt on here. And we're going to put the lid on. And we're going to set the timer for 10 minutes. You want to check and see if the water is boiling, and if it is, good. Go ahead and put the corn in, and if you put the corn in, holler at me so I can set the timer. How many timers do you have? I have two timers and one on the stove, and I think Macy has one on her phone too, so we can get all the timers we need. Okay, so we talked about steaming vegetables for pasta salad. We talked about steaming green beans. We talked about steaming corn. You got it in? All right, I have a timer set here for seven minutes. Um, so probably just before the timer rings, it'll be time to take the corn out. And that will also be time to, <laughs> to stir the, the stuff in the oven at the same time. So we'll use the same timer for two things. Someone's gonna have to uh, uh, keep me straight. I just walked out of the view of the other phone, didn't I, Macy? Someone's gonna have to keep me straight if I forget what my timers are for. I have space over here. Okay, here, I'll just put it here. There we go. Okay, what do I have left next on my list? So, I've got the uh, oven roasted done. I know what's next. I promised you guys I would talk about air fryers. I get a lot of questions here at the restaurant about air fryers. Are they useful? Are they worth it? 
Is it worth the space in my kitchen? Is it worth the money that I want to spend? Are they good for you? Do they work? Uh, can you make vegetables taste good with them? These are the questions I get. And so I really want to try in the next few minutes to answer some of those questions. So I have here, and I'm gonna bring them over so you can see without turning all your phones here. This is a large air fryer. This is the kind of air fryer that you would use for a family of four. Charlotte, there's no way that this would work for your family. <laughs> You would have to run it like four times. I think you're stuck with the oven. <laughs> um, Valerie says, thank you for talking about air fryers. <laughs> Yay! All right, so um, air fryers are really nice if you have a small family or if you want to do a small batch of something. Uh, and in that case, if you want to do it with little oil and if you want to not heat up the entire house by running the giant oven for a small batch, okay? Um, so like I said, this is actually a larger air fryer and there are other kinds too, okay? There's kind of with like the rotary thing inside. This is the kind that has a drawer, okay? So this drawer comes out, you put your vegetables in the drawer and you stick it back in and you turn it on. Now, do not let this drawer fool you. When I first looked at this drawer, I was like, wow, that's massive. I mean, I could fill that whole thing up with like 10 pounds of potatoes and make the best like, you know, oven fries or whatever, uh, potato wedges, or I could do fried tofu. So of course, dumb me, I have to try everything, right? <laughs> so I tried. I took, uh, I took four blocks of tofu, okay, four pounds of tofu. I cubed them up and I threw them in. And I was like, you know what? That should work about right because it only filled it half full. It didn't even fill it all the time. Half full, that's not too bad. That was my worst nightmare ever. That poor tofu, I had to run it through four cycles and I had to keep stirring it and stirring it. And every time I stirred it, the tofu disintegrated because the problem was there was not enough space for air circulation around the tofu. So the top layer looked beautiful, the bottom layer was mush. And uh, when I would stir it, the top layer, which was nice and crispy, would go to the bottom and turn soggy again, while it became on the top was crispy. And I finally had to take half of it out, put it in a bowl, and do two more cycles at half at a time before I could even get any semblance of air fried tofu. So moral of the story is a drawer this big We'll do two blocks of tofu, maximum. That's the most that you can fit in here. Um, so if that gives you an idea of size, that's probably about the amount of vegetables you'd wanna put in here as well, if you're gonna do potatoes or whatever. Uh, do a nice layer across the bottom, but don't do too many layers deep. Uh, the deeper it is, the longer it's gonna take, and it's not gonna have that nice crispy texture that you really want. Um, however, on the flip side, uh, air fried vegetables actually taste really good. Uh, they, it's kind of like putting your vegetables in a convection oven and having a fan blowing down on it really hard. That's basically what an air fryer is. And so you don't have to put oil on it. It will dry the veggies so that they're not wet and moist. It will dry them and it will make them crisp. They won't be as crispy as if you put like a ton of breading on it or whatever, you know, or, or deep fried it in oil. Um, but you're going to get a nice, uh, gently crispy texture. Um, and so it's really great for like uh, potatoes and veggies. Um, when you get tired of steaming them like this, um, uh, it's so much nicer when you can just have some variety. And like I said, it's not going to keep the house by turning on the oven. So what kind is that? So this now I want to talk about the other air fryer that I have. What's the brand of that one? Did you say that? This one here is an Instant Pot air fryer. This Instant Vortex. It's, it's the, yeah, it's the Instant Vortex. Uh, it's their medium size. They actually make one size larger than this. Uh, I got the medium size because Mercy, like, I don't know, if, can the other camera see? Um, this uh, takes up a massive amount of space on the counter. I actually bought this one for the restaurant so I could play around with it, do cooking classes with it, uh, play around with uh, air fried vegetables. Um, and then I got a smaller one for home. So my home one 
I actually use more often than the restaurant one because most of the time if I'm cooking at the restaurant, I'm cooking for so many people that I'd rather just use the oven. But uh, the home one, I'm going to bring this over here. If you recognize this, this is actually an instant pot. Um, I don't want to talk too much longer because the timer is about to ring. Um, but what this is, is this is an air fryer lid that goes on top of an Instant Pot. I got this before Instant Pot came out with their own lid. Instant Pot has a lid now that goes on the Instant Pot. This one is actually called the Mealthy Lid. The Mealthy Lid is glass. Um, I have heard some people say the Instant Pot could void your warranty if you use a Mealthy Lid on the Instant Pot. Um, so that is a risk that you may possibly be taking. Turn to the top. Does that look better there? Uh, this is the Mealthy Lid. It's called the Mealthy Crisp Lid. It was the first one that they came out with. Um, what was it, about a year ago, I think. Um, like I said, it's got a clear glass lid and uh, you can see the little fan here and it blows from the top. Uh, whereas the uh, big air fryer blows from the side, uh, this blows from the top. Um, and I'm gonna put myself on pause here because our timer just rang. So I'll talk about this more in a second. And let's uh, get our veggies out. It does appear that our actors have vacated the set, but I think they will return shortly. I'm coming. I'm coming. Ah, oh, here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> we just had a lot to do. Okay. You can bring the corn out now. Okay, so this is, it's been 20 minutes now. This is half done. Um, I'm going to bring this out now. Okay, so this is, it's been 20 minutes now. This is half done. Uh, you can see it there. Um, there's still plenty of water in there, so I'm totally good on water. And uh, somehow I forgot my spoon. Casey, you want to grab a wood spoon too while you're at it? I need a wood spoon too. She's bringing me the corn. Our corn is just finished as well. The green beans will be done in just a second. You can just put the corn there. And I just need a wood spoon to stir this with. So, here is our corn on the cup. Whew, look at that steam. All right. Anybody ready to dig in? I'm dripping on the floor. Ooh, it looks yummy. Can you see that? I can just barely see it, but yeah. I see it. I can hold it over here. How's that? We gotta make sure that they can see this. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we see it over here too? Yeah. All right. There's our fresh cooked corn on the cob, all ready to go. <laughs> and uh, if you wanna grab a salad cones and a plate. Um, thank you. Jean is telling us about her, her uh, air fryer that she also uses to, to warm up bread or make toast. Yes, and Works that is a the nice dehydrator. thing. With the air fryers, there's all different kinds with uh, different attachments and different things you can do. You can, you can warm up leftovers in your air fryer. Um, Daniel and I have roasted um, vegetarian hot dogs in the air fryer. Um, you can make toast in it. Uh, there's so many things that you can do. Um, not just air fry veggies. Charlotte wants some corn. <laughs> you can go ahead and set those on the plate there. And uh, actually before you do, you to throw these back in the oven for 20 more minutes. Oh, you got them. All right, that was our other timer ringing now, and that's for the green beans over here. Now, you're going to laugh at these green beans. Let's see if they're done. You remember how I told you to tell if they're done? You want to uh, grab your sharp knife and poke it in and see if it goes through, and it does. They're done. Um, you remember how purple these green beans were? Well, I want you to see what they look like now. They're as green as green gets. <laughs> the purple has completely disappeared and they look like normal green beans. <laughs> so I'm just gonna throw them here in my little um, my little container. Why well, I tell you, um, yeah, mercy, forget this idea. We're gonna do it this way. The nice thing about a basket 
Do you can take it out of the pot? If you have asbestos fingers. It's not hot. It's a handle. All right. Look at that. There's our onion and garlic green beans. Look at that, Macy. They're green. They're not purple anymore. <laughs> Okay. Michelle wants to wants you to post the steaming times for each type of veggie. She says I'll I, never remember. I think on my website that there is a chart for steaming vegetables. And if there is not, I will post it because I do have one made. I have a PDF and I should be able to post it as a comment on this video after our class is over. Um, so uh, if, yeah, you, look, look if back. you don't see it uh, today, look back tomorrow. And if it's not there, uh, send me a private message and say, hey, you forgot to put the PDF on there. We're done with this spot, uh, Macy. At least I think we are for right now. And Macy brought out our plate for the corn. Oh, Mercy, I wish you could smell this corn. This is uh, peaches and cream from the local farmer's market. And uh, Daniel and I have a little secret with corn. When we take it out like this and we're ready to put it on the table, we take a paper towel and we get it wet and we carefully place it over the top. And that damp paper towel uh, keeps it from drying out and it also helps keep the heat in. Uh, so that way you don't have dried out corn uh, by the end of your meal. So um, that's our little, our little corn tidbit there. So I'm just gonna set this here for now. I tell you, I'm getting hungry smelling all this amazing food now. All right, I'm done with the, this pot here as well. So we're going to do air fryer next. Yeah, we are getting started with the air fryer. We are just getting started with the air fryer. So back to this air fryer. So the okay. way the Nealthy uh, air fryer works, like I said, it has a fan on top uh, versus the the big one has a fan on the back that blows over. So the fan on top doesn't blow quite as much. Um, I found that things are a little bit less crispy and a little bit less dry, um, which I actually personally like better. I don't like things completely dried out and crispy. I still like them moist. And I find that they're a little moister in here than they are in this one. Um, and uh, I've been using this today, so it looks used right now. But what it does, it just sets it has a little stand and a little basket and that stand and the basket set inside your regular instant pot and you don't plug the instant pot and in and you, you just... do not plug the instant pot in no please don't um you only plug in your lid and uh with your lid um well let's just put some stuff in here how's that let's put some food in Set these over here so I have my cutting board again. Um, I will say on the lid with the Instant Pot one, the Mealthy lid, or if you're using the Instant Pot, either one, um, the Instant Pot lid, the one that goes on your Instant Pot holds half the amount of the big air fryer. So where I could do two blocks of tofu in the big air fryer, in my little Instant Pot lid one, I can only fit one block of tofu. So you're looking at a very small batch, very um, small amount of uh, veggies. Um, if I'm doing potatoes for Daniel and I, I will do two potatoes, and that's about the max it can hold, which is just enough for the two of us to have a nice side and then eat some other things with it. So like corn on the cob. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, let's chop a few veggies in there so you can see how it works, okay? So I'm gonna start with potatoes. Um, these are brand new, new potatoes. I'm just gonna do wedges here. Wedges, of course, take a little bit longer to do, uh, but I think we have time, so it'll be okay. If I see any green on them, I'll peel the green off. My mom had a message for you. She said, if you are growing potatoes and you harvest potatoes, and then you wonder why the potatoes turn green after you harvest them, it's because uh, when you harvest your potatoes, you want to make sure that they stay completely covered for the first two weeks after you pick them while they're curing. Uh, if you leave them covered for two weeks, don't let any light get to them at all. They will not turn green. But if you leave some light to them while they're curing in that first two weeks, then you are guaranteed green potatoes. 
So anyway, I just thought you might like that little tidbit from my mom. Beth Ann wants to know how big is the Instant Pot. The Instant Pot that I'm using is a six quart Instant Pot. That's the one that, that's uh, the size that the Mealthy Lid is made for. <laughs> but it does not hold six quarts of veggies if you're using the lid because of that little basket that goes on, on top and for airspace. There's a serious power. I hope it stays on. But the good news is if it goes off, the lights will go out, but the cell phones won't. <laughs> because uh, the cell phones are running out of battery. It just might be a little dark in here. <laughs> okay, so I have a few veggie, a uh, few potatoes here. Um, you can also do, not just potatoes, you can also do sweet potatoes. Uh, sweet potatoes are really good in the uh, air fryer. So I'm going to uh, chop a few sweet potatoes to go with it too. We're going to do a mix of potatoes and sweet potatoes and see how it goes. Sounds like um, some hail going with it here. So, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to take the bottom here, and uh, we do not have to uh, put any oil in the air fryer, uh, but I always like to spray the bottom off just in case. It's actually a non stick bottom, so it shouldn't stick. Um, so, I'm just going to throw a. Let's see, what should I use? Unfortunately, it looks like the comments thread has gotten hijacked by a bunch of spammers, so we may have to block comments. Oh no! So sad! I'm sorry guys! Don't know how that happened. Because I like your comments, but we don't like the spam comments. Well, I hope you can still watch any anyway, even if you can't comment. Okay, so I'm gonna throw in these potatoes here in the bottom. And we're gonna add some sweet potato. Where did I put my sweet potato? Here it is. Macy, what time is it? 6.46. Okay. The comments go away. If I go a few minutes past seven, will anyone hate me? Probably not. Okay, maybe maybe it's problem fixed now. Yay! Problem fixed! You can comment again. That's crazy. I'm so happy and I'm so sorry about the craziness. But please comment again now that you can. I want to use a bigger knife for this. Can you see what I'm doing or is all the stuff blocking it? Just uh, making some sweet potato wedges here. How's that? <laughs> hey. Bethan is pointing out that I think most of the comments are in another language. I'm yeah. right. <laughs> well, at least we couldn't read whatever they were saying. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> the comments probably... did say vegan, so they were talking about something. Yeah, it was, I don't know what it was. But... Well, maybe some uh, vegan people were talking amongst themselves. Who knows? <laughs> and if so, we're glad you're watching. interesting. It happens whenever rain comes from that side. Okay, so I have some potatoes and sweet potatoes here. So if we go offline unexpectedly, it may be because of Noah's flood or something. I don't know. <laughs> you want to check and make sure that um, it's okay. So I'm going to put some seasonings on here. I'm going to put a little bit of onion powder and I'm going to put some garlic powder on here. And I'm 
I'm going to put some paprika. Thank you for rescuing that, Daniel. And put the parsley on here. We're going to make this taste really good. All right, and I'm just going to do a really light spray. And we're going to put this into the, in the air fryer. Here you go. You should be able to see that there. Hopefully, I think. While Daniel takes care of the waterfall. Okay. So I'm going to put this in the air fryer. And we're going to haul it over somewhere else where we can actually plug it in. Someone wants to know what cooking spray you use. Uh, that was just olive oil. Uh, cooking spray. Um, you can use whatever uh, kind you want. And it's totally optional. You don't even have to put it on. Okay, I want you to see what this looks like. Can um, can both cameras see this thing over here? So when I plug it in, uh, you can see I've got several options on here. It has air fry, roast, bake, reheat, time, and temperature. And of course, the main one I use is air fry, but uh, if I was using this a lot at home, I would use some of the other settings too. Um, and uh, with, I'm gonna leave it on air fry. And then over here you can see time and temperature. So I've got temperature at 400 degrees and time is 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, I totally forgot the way this works. The way this works, it actually wants uh, to, uh, sorry, we're gonna do it anyway. Um, start, there we go. It actually likes to preheat the basket before you put the food in. But you don't have to because I only put a tiny bit of stuff in the bottom anyway. Um, but you'll see it gives a it gives a preheat is on right now. It's gonna let it run for a little bit and then it'll beep and uh, start the time for us. So while it's doing that, I want to do a few other veggies in the meal be lid so you can see how I use that. We're gonna make some zucchini wedges and we're gonna air fry some zucchini. I love air fried zucchini. Um, it has a nice crispy texture, um, but yet it's soft in the middle and uh, it's, it's not mushy. Um, it has a really good texture. So I just make, um, I just cut pieces just like I do with the potatoes. Uh, like you're making oven fries, just it's zucchini fries. <laughs> Anna asked a few minutes ago, what cooking spray do you use? Yeah, we answered that. Okay. But, uh, yeah, olive oil spray or coconut oil spray. Um, if you use coconut oil spray, it actually gives your uh, veggies a, a buttery flavor, which tastes really good too. So you can use your preference. All right, we got some zucchini here. And along with the zucchini, I'm going to throw in just a few pieces of cauliflower. Uh, roasted cauliflower is really good. So. Um, I'm just going to take my little basket here and I'm going to spray it off. We're going to put the zucchini on it. You can see it doesn't hold a lot. You can see I've almost filled it there just with that one zucchini. Now if that gives you an idea of size, that's about the max it will hold. But we're going to throw in just a couple cauliflower pieces. I use big ones and if they get done sooner, I just take them out before the zucchini is done and that's fine. Charlotte wants to taste her air fried zucchini. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> you can do it in the oven. Um, it's just not going to be quite as dry because the, unless you have a convection oven with a fan. But here we go. There's our uh, zucchini and cauliflower. We're just going to do the same thing. And we're just going to put a little bit of uh, salt. Put some onion powder on those too. All right, and we're just going to set those right on top of that little trivet that came with the meal lid. And uh, this one, uh, if you want to see what it looks like, <laughs> I can't turn both on the same circuit. So 
So this is in here now. Um, but when I push the power button to turn on, once it's plugged in, uh, the pulling this up, the handle, will shut it off, which is really nice. Uh, and pushing the handle down will turn it back on. There's a stop and play button, which is basically start and stop. And there's a temperature and time, and a plus and minus. Very simple, only those little buttons, and it only has one function, just air fry. So I'm gonna stick this over on the other counter and plug it in so it's not on the same circuit. You can probably still see me. I can follow you over there, maybe. sliced. We're going to put that on here on our pan that's warm. 
this is a ceramic pan. It doesn't need any oil. If it starts sticking, I just add a tiny bit of water. And it doesn't take much because you don't want too much water. You'll lose your flavor. But you do want a little bit. So we're going to let those onions wilt a little bit. And while they're wilting, we're going to get the kale ready. This is a home oh, mercy. Now I'm crying. <laughs> Now you get to watch Christina cry. Oh my. <laughs> so this is red kale. Um, and the nice thing is if you do not want uh, the stems in your sauteed greens, then you just simply grab the stem and pull it off. There we go. says every time your timer goes off, she thinks it's ours and tells us to go shut it off. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll have another timer go off in two minutes, just to warn you. All right, we're going to throw the kale in here now. If you know when it's going to go off, why do you need the timer? Because I'm watching it. Oh, okay.
the first nine minutes. They're ready to flip. You can see that cauliflower is just about done. Um, but I'm just going to stir that all together and we're going to give it another nine minutes. Michelle says, I would have stayed for the live if I could have sampled all the recipes. <laughs> well, you can sample all the recipes. You just have to make them first. That's right. That's why we're doing this. We want you to be so hungry that you'll go home and make it yourself. All right. So I'm going to use this bowl here to mince some garlic in. What time is it, Macy? 7 o'clock. All right. Well, this is our last thing here. Once uh, that has nine minutes left. I understand if you can't stay. We're having so much fun. I want you to see the final products. Okay, so I said I was gonna give that five more minutes. I've got the garlic ready for it now. I'm gonna do one more garlic. We're putting garlic in those greens. Um, and then we're gonna put some fresh lemon juice in there too. I have a lemon here that I'm going to use, and uh, I'm going to get it ready. That way when I put the garlic in, I can put it all in together at the same time. When all this is done, Macy, you're going to have to get us a big plate so I can put a little bit on the plate so we can see everything all done at once. So Charlotte uh, has a question. She says, I bought two packs of fresh kale at Kroger's. The next day, one was still crisp and the other was wilted. How can I tell which pack of kale is fresh at the store? You can look at the expiration date. Um, and uh, you can also look at how much it's in the fridge. Uh, it could be a combination of how cold it was at the store. And also it could be like where it was in your refrigerator if you had a warm pocket in your fridge as well. That can cause it. But um, I always look for uh, yellow. I look at the expiration date on the bag. Um, and other than that, there's not much else you can do. <laughs> Oh wow, now the garlic is in here. Oh, it's amazing. Do you smell that, Macy? Yes. Wow, it's incredible. So, I'm going to take this lemon and uh, get rid of my, some of the seeds here because I don't want all the seeds in it. We're 
we're just going to take this lemon and squeeze some fresh lemon on the kale. It's beeping at me to stir it. Yeah, it actually says turn food. It actually says turn food. Can you see that on the video? Uh, I'll swing it over. Oh, it's it's gone now. <laughs> Sorry for the motion sickness. Well, it actually <laughs> said turn food, so I probably better turn it. I'm going to put a little salt on this before I forget what I'm doing here. Alright, I want you to see these greens. Check that out. Doesn't that just look amazing? And there's no oil in there at all. Wow. Onion, garlic, greens, um, just incredible. Fresh lemon juice, a little salt. Talk about flavor. <laughs> I'll right. set the plate next to the... Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Well, Charlotte, Charlotte says she was asking about fresh bunches of kale when it's already, when it's still fresh. Oh, store. fresh bunches of kale? Uh, look for yellow leaves. That's about all you can do. Okay, I'm burning these in here. There you can see them. They're just about done there. Look at that. Nice and crisp. Ready to go. Yum, yum. You ready to eat? make a plate because we're almost done here that uh, mealy pot lid I think is just about finished too so let's get where'd you put the plate here you want to give me a corn I want I want you to see everything we just made if I had more time I could have gone on and on you can see I still have more vegetables here uh, I could have made you stir fry um, I will just briefly tell you about stir fry while I'm putting this together. Annette um, wants to know what kind of pan you are using. What kind of pan this is? Yeah. Uh, this is actually a ceramic nonstick skillet. There's no nonstick coating on it, it's just ceramic. Thank you so much. Uh, but uh, that works so nicely. When you get them, there's all different kinds of ceramic, uh, but I look for one that has a nice heavy duty bottom. Uh, because the heavy duty bottom, the thickness of that ceramic is going to tell you how long it's going to last. Um, so look for something that is heavy duty. Put a few of these on there. Boy, I'm just about ready to dig in. Put some veggies on there. Now is that mealy lid over there? Let's see how much longer it sits. I'm gonna set that right there for a second. Christina, what all did you have in the air fryer? In the air fryer? Which one? Uh, this one out front. That is just potatoes and sweet potatoes. Okay. Jane wants to know if I'm gonna eat all of that. Mm, <laughs> I think I could. I'm quite <laughs> sure that he's capable of it. I need oh. a... That was not what I intended to do. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a live of me. <laughs> How'd you finish that? All right, I want to show you the zucchini. Trying to stay away from the camera. <laughs> I want to show you the zucchini now. It's done and ready to go. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Like you, you guys have no idea what kind of meal we just made. Yeah, and I wish that you could smell it through the through the video. <laughs> I can smell it right now, and it's just amazing. <laughs> so I don't want you to ever tell me that vegetables are boring ever again, okay? If anyone tells me that or that they're tired of veggies, they haven't tried some of this stuff. Like, seriously, you have no idea what you're missing. Um, we got to put some green beans on here, too. Let's 
let's get some green beans. Can't forget those. Those are the purple green beans that turn green. These were green. the purple green beans that turned green. That's correct. All right. We're going to let you see this plate now. Everything made in one hour. I have to toggle it down a little further. Too close. Hold it down. Sorry. That's good. That's good. Is that better? You tell me where. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody hungry? Me. And just think, <laughs> we did this all with one hot plate and one oven and uh, Two air fryers. <laughs> Two air fryers. <laughs> well, I don't think everyone's going to make all of those veggies at once in one meal. So I hope you have some ideas now on how you can do a different veggie every week and have it taste different, or I should say every day of the week. Have it taste different and have a different side and a different flavor so you don't get bored of your veggies. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us and joining me in my messy uh, countertop kitchen over here. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the class as much as I have. Um, and I hope you have a better idea of things that you can do without deep frying in a ton of oil um, and how to eat some of the most amazing veggies that God created. Um, I did want to mention one thing on the stir fry. You can do stir fry in this same pan or you can do it in that um, this uh, wok that I had or you can do a stainless steel wok as well. Um, and uh, you simply, the same principle as what we did with the steamed, uh, with the sauteed greens. You put your onion in first, no oil needed, uh, cook it, and then, uh, of course, add your veggies. Um, if you're putting in carrots, they take longer to cook, so you'll put them in first with the onions, and then add your uh, broccoli and cauliflower, and then I like to use coconut aminos for flavor. Um, and uh, in the meantime, it's gonna, you, if you're not using oil, you have to do something, and so what I do is I put a little bit of boiling water in with it. If you add boiling water, you create instant steam, and you can actually steam your stir fry without frying it, and uh, no oil necessary. And then you can just serve it with rice or with noodles or however you want it. So anyway, uh, please uh, go home and try some, well, I guess you're already home. Uh, go try some veggies. <laughs> and hey, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send us a message, or you can call the restaurant, uh, Christina's Kitchen, uh, you can email me, Christina at christinaskitchen.org. You can look up our website, christinaskitchen.org. Uh, we've got a lot of neat recipes on there. Uh, follow us on YouTube, um, or you can follow us on Facebook, and we'll post a picture of what we're making every day and make you all hungry. So um, anyway, I just want to say happy cooking, uh, and I hope you have an amazing uh, month until our next class. And Daniel, will you close us with a word of prayer? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your many blessings towards us, and thank you for this great time that we've had this evening. I pray that you will bless each one who is listening until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And please mark your calendars the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. We are live. I love the interaction. Thanks so much for your participation today, and have a great evening. God bless. See you next time. God bless.